everybody. Welcome into Letterman Row, Letterman Live here downtown Columbus, where the sun did come up today. Oh, yeah. After a, a strange, uh, bizarre, uh, very unusual day for me to cover uh, Ohio State yesterday. I was at Alumni House for about uh, 13 hours. The Board of Trustees deliberated for 12. The end result, guys, was Urban Meyer, as you know, suspended for three games. Gene Smith is currently sus is going to face a suspension of about 17 days coming up. Uh, but obviously, this is about Urban Meyer more than anybody else. So uh, as two guys who have played for Urban Meyer, who have given a lot to uh, the Scarlet and Gray in their careers, I wonder what um, yesterday was like for you guys. Um, I mean, I, I guess I could just you know take it off um, first. It, it's definitely tough to hear news like this. Um, one, um, I, I guess the, the reason why it's really tough for me is because coming in as a freshman, and Zach has his own experience with this as well, um, you know, I was the recruiting class coming in when we unfortunately heard the news about Tress. So um, it was at least fresh in my mind of the worst case scenario happening. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a bit of relief, but also um, kind of an in, in between feeling that I, you know, I felt after the news because, you know, he won't be there for the guys on, the, on week one, which obviously is tough. But, you know, I, I had the chance to go to practice and and talk with some of the guys and, and see their focus and determination and 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 really how hard they're working at practice. And, and that's where I'm I'm really comfortable comfortable in the fact that, you know, these guys are working their asses off, man. And and, and we're going to be completely fine for these three three weeks because we got the best supporting staff in the country, really. I think it's completely different the way you look at it. You know, I think from a player's perspective and even assistant coach's perspective, it's completely different than the perspective of the media and now us as fans, right? Former players, fans, where some of us are outraged. Actually, it seems like everyone's outraged, right? <laughs> some people either wanted them fired from the national media, and then people here in town, the media here in town, the fans here in town thought three games was too harsh, right? So um, it's a whole different perspective. And I think from the, the player side of things and the assistant coaches side of things is they're relieved because they know he's coming back, right? It's it's now they can take it upon themselves. There's a there's a resolution to the investigation to everything that came out. Now they can kind of sit back, work really hard, know that hey, we at, we're in control of every single game, right? Whether Coach Myers there or not on the sidelines, but they know he's coming back. They know all they have to do is take care of business the first three weeks, and Coach Myers will be back on the sidelines, being their leader. And Zach, I mean, <clears throat> you referenced this that I guess nobody is really going to be happy or celebrating and, and really nobody wins in situations like this mm -hmm. regardless you and I have talked about this before on the show um, to me it seems a little odd either Urban Meyer is cleared to be your coach and you trust him to run this huge million dollar you know program corporation face of the university or you don't I thought the suspension to me was odd you're either going to let him tr run the program again or not I don't really understand fully how they arrived at this punishment. So I'm I'm guessing that we're on the same page, but did, what did you make of the punishment itself? It was a lose-lose situation. Either way, we've talked about it. Ever since the, the first news came out three weeks ago, it was a lose-lose situation. National media, you know, obviously fans of other programs, fans of college football wanted him fired, thought this was a huge deal. People here locally that had a little bit better understanding of everything that was going on, the former players, the fans, they wanted nothing, right? And I, I, I've, we've heard multiple things that the deliberation yesterday lasted 12 hours because some people in that room wanted him either fired or suspended, and there was a good amount of people in that room who wanted nothing at all. Said, do you know what? He's done his time. He's been away from his team for three weeks. This was a domestic violence investigation into, you know, Title IX, um, essentially rules that were put in place within the university, and they weren't in. There was no. Um, there was nothing wrong that was done the entire time between Gene and Urban. I mean, I don't know what else to say, but to put it to put it politically correctly, there was nothing wrong. They came out and said there was nothing wrong. Right. So when you sit back and you look at the suspension, it essentially comes off of what an assistant coach did, the culture that he brought to the program, mm -hmm. when that had nothing to do with the investigation in the first place. You know, it, it was black and white. If you read the report, it came out and said there were no violations made by Gene Smith or Urban Meyer in regards to the Title IX rules and regulations put forth by the university and the domestic violence case. Yeah, it's interesting to look at that 
Evan, too, because they, as Zach said, when you look at the report, there were a lot of references to good faith efforts, <clears throat> excuse me, by Urban Meyer, yeah. um, that he wasn't uh, purposefully misleading anybody with the statements, even at Big Ten Media Day. That became a big talking point at some point, mm -hmm. that he was lying in public. Uh, th then you have the back and forth with the edits and the original reporting being erroneous, which even Ohio State uh, addressed in that report. Mm -hmm. But to me, it comes down to, so I say I have a hard time understanding the three-game suspension. I also have a lot of questions about why Zach Smith, somebody that you once played for, the volume of stuff that, that right. they refer that they uncovered right. that Zach you know talked to that that wasn't supposed to be necessarily the crux of the investigation. But when you're spending five hundred thousand dollars to overturn rocks, you're yeah. going to probably you're find, find you're going to find the truth, right? Uh, I, I don't I don't want to put you on the spot with this, but did did you did anybody sense that there were this many problems with Zach Smith, and why did that? It just seems to me like yeah. Urban had too big of a blind spot. Here. Right. I mean, that's that, that's one thing that's commonly talked about. I guess what my biggest just confusion with it all is is you know, Coach Smith obviously you know was the guy that was there for me and and and, and was the, really the dude who pushed me to be a better man and and be a better football player um, and and helped lead me to um, you know the the things that I was able to do in my career. So once all of the truth is coming out on on some of the things that were going on, whether at the time that I was there or not, it's 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 like almost unbelievable to me. <laughs> uh, but you know, obviously with the things coming out, the the due diligence kind of had to be done, and 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 I think that. You know, while the the three game suspension, it's it, it's tough for us to hear, and it wasn't anything that we wanted to hear. You know, to to Zach's point, you know, when when I had the chance to go there talking with Nuremberg or whatever, um, you know, when when Coach Meyer is not sitting there coaching punt or something in practice, that's something you know Zach and I would know. It's it's a different feel, right? So to know that that's coming back, you know, granted it's a suspension that none of, that nobody wanted. Uh, but, you know, kind of was uh, a little bit within the realms of possibility. But knowing that he's coming back is, is, a, is a big cushion point for them. Uh, yeah, and, and to kind of answer your question from my perspective, we live at the Woody Hayes. I don't know if people realize that, <laughs> right. but we live at the Woody Hayes facility, right? When you are playing football at Ohio State, you spend – let's say 300 out of 365 days at the Woody Hayes facility. You are there. From coaches' perspective, they are there more than us, right. right? That's essentially their home. They spend more time in the Woody Hayes than they do at their own household. I know coaches when we played that their coach's office was half coach's office, half, hey, my kid's birthday gifts, my kid's Christmas yeah. gifts. Right. You know, if I'm ordering something, if I want something, if I want apparel, if I want a jacket, if I, if I want clothes, they order it on Amazon and ship it to the Woody Hayes because that is their house, right? right? Um, when we were there, we, we saw, you know, what Coach Fickle, what Coach Doc Trust, what's Coach Hinton got their kids for Christmas because they would bring it there. Yeah. Coach Meyer is not looking in the coach's office and seeing what is coming to the Woody Hayes facility. The players, we are in the coach's office more than Coach Meyer is because all their meetings happen in the big, the big offices, yeah. right? Coach yeah. Meyer's office, the meeting rooms, not in the coach's offices themselves. If players like Evan didn't know, yeah, I didn't right, know, exactly. right? If we don't know because we're in their office, how is Coach Meyer supposed to know? That's what people don't realize. Coach Meyer is not checking every box that comes in the Woody Hayes facility. There is so much mail that comes within the Woody Hayes because all the coaches, all the people that are there, players sometimes have stuff mailed to the Woody Hayes. When we live in dorms or when we live in apartments, sometimes we don't want packages yeah. going there, and we'll send it to the Woody Hayes yeah. facility because we know we're going to mm -hmm. get it. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> It's it's one of those things where Coach Meyer isn't there literally looking at every square inch of the Woody Hayes facility. Right. There's a lot of stuff that goes on that he has no idea. So I think it's completely wrong for people to say, hey, it happened under the, the Woody Hayes roof. Coach Meyer should know. There's a bunch of stuff that happens underneath there that no one knows about. Yeah, there are, as you said, Zach, you guys are, are living there, and there's 85 of you that are on scholarship and 9 yep. to 10 assistant coaches. I mean – and all the other supporting staff too. I mean, <laughs> so yeah. that's a pretty that's a lot. I mean, it, you, you have to. I think this point has been raised by others. If you're the CEO of any corporation here downtown Columbus, do you know what every one of your mm -hmm. employees are doing? I'm not. I don't think any of us are saying this to justify necessarily what happened with the way Urban Meyer handled it, because some of this stuff, you know, he did know about, and admitted to knowing about. Um, when you have some of the details, like going to a strip club on a recruiting trip, I mean, you can't you can't have that. 
So I just, to me, it seems weird that Brian Hartline is sitting in the back of that room and to me looks like a potential upgrade at that position. Yeah. You know, why did that not happen already? But, yeah. Uh, that's uh, yeah. I, I think he turned his back a little bit, but but then again, it, with him being on a recruiting visit down in Miami, he spent his own money. It wasn't put on the Ohio State recruiting budget, right? Their credit cards. It was it was came out in the report. It was his own funds. Right. How is Coach Meyer supposed to know, know what Zach Smith is doing in Miami in South Florida at? 10, 11 o'clock at night on a recruiting visit. He expects him to be in his hotel asleep, right? Coach Meyer's up here out recruiting somewhere else. Yeah. He can't keep tabs on it. You know, I mean, and, and, and another thing is too is like all of these coaches have their own individual schedules, right? So there's so much yeah. about Coach Meyer being accountable for everybody else, but at the end of the day, like his focus is on winning ball games. His focus is on you know putting on a good face for recruits. His focus is on being able to show families that you know their kids are going to be better men by coming yeah. to this program. Um, so you know, within all of this understanding, you know, there's got to be a, a bit of job integrity, a bit too. You know that hey, I'm hiring you to do this job, and and I trust you to do that. You're going to do it to the fullest, but but with that comes a level of trust. Um, and, and I think that the way that Coach Meyer kind of uh, adjusted the, the different um, incidences as they came about was, listen, Zach, like there's, 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 no, there's no way that we can have this anymore and, and try to do his best to, to nip it in the bud right there and, and handle it in-house and, 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 and allow us to continue to, to focus on winning football games. But again, there's, there's got to be a, hey, if, if I'm bringing you on to – you know, to, to, to do a job, you know, I want you to do it to your fullest, and I'm going to trust that you're going to do everything um, in terms of presenting yourself to, to put the best product out on the table. You, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Coach Meyer hates babysitting. Mm -hmm. That is his biggest thing. He wants guys that come in there. He says it every single day. You need to come in there, be a grown man, and do what you're supposed yeah. to do, right? I'm not here to hold your hand. I'm not here to babysit you. Coach Meyer, if there's any babysitting going on, it's the 85 guys that are on scholarship. Yeah. Those are the guys that do you know what. Maybe he's got to babysit. When you are a grown man assistant coach, Coach Meyer is not sitting there babysitting you, right? Mm -hmm. So Coach Meyer will probably be the first to turn his back to something that an assistant coach does or did because he thinks that guy's taking care of, yeah, of business, sure. right? right? He he would uh, – an assistant coach is getting paid six figures at Ohio State. Coach Meyer would think that's the last person I have to babysit to make sure he's doing his job. So right. when he hears something, you're right, it probably goes in one ear and out the other because he's worried about – if he does have to babysit the 85 guys that are on scholarship because he's getting reports from people outside of the program on stuff that they're doing every weekend. Yeah. You know, you can only babysit so much and still be able to do what you're supposed to do as the head football coach of Ohio State. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Zach, according to the report and the investigation, he uh, appeared to have followed the protocol to the best of his knowledge. So mm -hmm. um, even when it, it's not as if he turned his back completely on that or – uh, ignored things that he thought he had to tell compliance. Now, could he have done it better? Could Gene Smith have handled that better? better? You know, the report suggests that they could, but it, not that they were participating in any sort of cover-up. So that's that's that. Let's look at how this impacts a team that plays on the field in nine days uh, against Oregon State. Urban Meyer will not be participating in any part of those practices next week. He will not be able to return until that following Monday as uh, Ohio State gets ready for that game week number two against Rutgers. So we've talked a lot this month, guys, about you know the paid administrative leave, how you handled uh, you know sort of interim coach situations that mm -hmm. you guys have been through. So that training camp is over. This is game week. Um, I imagine there's going to be some differences going on uh, with Ryan Day leading some of that for next week. I'm curious how you guys would approach this as players with missing Urban Meyer next week for one game prep and then what the difference may be for game two or game three with him not being on the sideline. I think it's easy. I think those guys are going to go out there and take care of business. Yeah. It's it's not, you know, this isn't Coach Tressel leaving and Coach Fickle being the coach for the entire year knowing that, hey, I'm not going to get the coach back. Hey, I'm not getting six or seven players back until week seven, mm -hmm. week eight of the season. Correct. This is all the players are there, hands on deck. This is Coach Myers coming back in four weeks. This is, hey, we're just going out there and taking care of business. The other thing that people don't realize is Coach Mick Marotti has so much to do with that program, mm -hmm. even at practice, let alone the offseason, that from pregame meal to pregame you know, pre out on the field to even in the locker room, Coach Mick is the first one to address the team before Coach Meyer does before we walk out. Mm -hmm. Do you so, think he'll be the last one? 
for games? I, I, I'm sure. Uh, no, I'm no. sure Coach Day will take yeah, that. Okay. Coach Day will say something beforehand. Yeah. But those guys are going to keep – all those coaches have been there. There's no new coaches, right? <laughs> those guys have been there. They know what a football game is supposed to be like. Uh, what a game day is supposed to be like. They will keep that schedule. The guys on the team know what they're supposed to do. They'll find their routine, their same routine, and they'll go out there and take care of business. It's not like, hey, we're it, we're completely throwing you for a loop, right? Yeah. They're still going to keep their same routines. And as a football player, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Keep me in my routine. I want the same routine routine each and every game. Yeah, I think he. I think Zach hit on the the, the perfect point. You know, it, it's so much about routine at the next level, and and specifically the 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 programs that can separate themselves mm -hmm. and really take themselves to the next levels are the ones that can block out all the noise and really focus on. Hey, we got Bloody Tuesday today, <laughs> and 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 Wednesday is going to be you know third down and and hopefully some short yardage, and then Thursday we're going to clean everything up with some red zone and see some touchdowns and feel good before you know Fast Friday, and then we got a game on Saturday like that routine right there is not changing and the, and the great part about Ohio State is we are so good at being able to focus on what our jobs are you know taking it back from the last conversation is you know when we're focusing on the players themselves you know we have a do your job sign above all the pregame meals and it's because if you do your job it's enough for us to win the net area you know to win the play and then hopefully the game you know at the end of the day so um, that those type of routines being able to just focus on what we need to do in, in, in punt or short yardage or first down or third down or whatever is what's going to carry us along and we you know we got a great football team that's that has great leaders and that's incredibly driven and, and at this point wants to go out there and just play football you know I feel like you guys have already answered this but I'm going to say it anyway there are people out there that have changed their expectations for Ohio State because of <laughs> uncertainty with Coach Meyer you're talking about the routine and how you know easily you think they can uh, handle that for three weeks Did any part of this concern you at all for the rest of the season or change your expectations for this team and the ability to win the Big Ten again or get back to the playoff. Yeah, do what it does for the better, honestly. you Going into this season, I thought this team was going to be really good, like really good. Now, after everything that's happened, I think this team's going to be even better. And the way I say – the reason why I say that is because – Ohio State, really talented teams. You've been on some. I've been on some, right? You really don't hit your stride until you are battle-tested, right? Going into a season, there's always, hey, we're Ohio State. We're going to go out there, you know. And until you really get punched in the mouth mm -hmm. as a team and come together at Ohio State, you you that's what makes the great teams yeah. great, yeah. right? Um, and I think this team is punched in the mouth before even week one, right. which I think makes this team even hungrier, yeah. even more willing to go out there – and set the tone for the rest of college football and go out there to prove a point. Right. You know, like, th think about the Johnny Dixons of the world that, you know, hey, this is my last go-around, and I'm going to do everything in my power to make an effect, you know, here at Ohio State. I'm going to catch balls after practice, and I'm going to, to know every route, you know, in this entire route concept to, to help the young guys that might need to know something in that space. Like, that all gets amplified when they're hearing some of the things that they've been hearing in the media. And obviously, you know, you, you try to block out the noise and focus on what's important, but, you know, sometimes it slips in. And obviously being here in Columbus, it's, it's very easy to slip in. But, you know, thinking about how we think at Ohio State and what separates us is getting punched in the mouth like that only really pisses us off. Yep. And that's when you see us <laughs> yeah. flip that switch, right? You know, so many of us talk about flipping the switch. And, like, these are perfect instances to see, like, okay, what exactly are they talking about and where is it coming from? And those are instances just like that, you know. Oh, poor Oregon State. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> Actually, exactly. not even Oregon State. I feel bad for everyone to throughout this year. Else, yes. Always, <laughs> every, every, everyone else is here. I, I, we really believe that. You know, it's I can go back and just think of games, you know, where it, Virginia Tech in 2014, right, came out there and just got punched in the mouth. It's kind of like a wake-up call. Yeah. Completely different team after that. I mean, I know 2012 when we went undefeated, our first three games, actually Miami was fine, but the you next got, two, three games. We got punched in the Cal game there. We did. Yeah, we got right, punched in yeah. the Cal game, right, and then we come out against Miss Michigan State, and it's a heavyweight fight, and we're a completely different team after yeah. that, right? So um, it, this happening this early just makes that team hungry, and a hungry Ohio State team is very scary for the rest of college football absolutely is there any part of you, for you guys as now now former players looking at this team that says well this is be interesting let's see how ryan day handles this for three games is it any, do you put view it as an audition for him at all or do you and you've alluded to the continuity of the rest of the staff or do you just say he's merely holding the place coach mick's gonna hold it down 
This is just yeah. biding I mean, some time to learn. I, I wouldn't say it's a placeholder. Um, you know, obviously, Coach Mick has a great hold in, in keeping us focused on what's next, keeping us focused on uh, on getting ready for the games, getting ready for practices, and, and, and all that. But you know, I, I wouldn't want to put it in a in a framework to where it's going to be an audition or not. It's yeah. hey, we got to win a football game. We're going to prepare to do everything that we can, you know, to to win that game. And yeah. and the responsibilities that Ryan Day had beforehand are going to be similar that they're going to have afterwards. But he's going to have to report, you know, afterwards as as the head interim head football coach. Right. But the thing is, is that you know the the staff's focus on 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 what their job is going to be in order to affect a winning football game. Um, it's still going to be the same. So. Yeah, I, I don't think it's an audition. I think it's merely, um, you know, Coach Day is a very, very good coach. Very, He's going to be a great interim head coach. I don't see it as an audition. I just see him as going out there and him taking the, you know, there was a reason why he was appointed right. head, uh, interim head coach, right? He's going to go out there. He's taking that role seriously. He's going to lead the guys. He's going to do everything that's expected of him as a head coach of the Ohio State University for those three games. And, you know, I don't think he looks at it as an audition. I don't think he just views it as an interim. I think he views it as, hey, it's another responsibility that I have for three weeks yeah. to go out there and do what I'm supposed to do for this football I team. Agree more. All right, we'll reset a little bit here. Uh, what do you got? Will, does anybody have any questions for us? We appreciate everybody. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if we appreciate everybody wherever you're watching us on uh, or streaming on the site, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. If you have any questions, we've got our our ace staff in the back that'll send them for these guys at Zach Bourne and Evan Spencer and I'm Austin Ward. Uh, we're talking about Urban Meyer's three game suspension. Uh, Gene Smith uh, will also be missing, although that doesn't really affect anything on the field. Uh, you can tweet some questions at these guys. Uh, Evan Spencer, Zach Bourne, shoot them your handle. Guys, let them know where to find you. E underscore Spencer six. Any questions? <laughs> uh, shoot them my way. I'm pulling my phone out of my pocket <laughs> as we speak, so we'll see what we get. Seaborn so, 44. I can't believe I haven't changed that handle, but I haven't. <laughs> That's been around for a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I will shoot them, yell them at us if somebody uh, jumps on on Facebook. We'll have these guys address that. We can keep them around at HQ for a couple more minutes before they've got to go on uh, with their days. We appreciate them joining us as always. Uh, Letterman Row contributors. Um, Evan, you mentioned something when you walked in that you did see a practice early on. And since this all revolves around Zach Smith, uh, let's tie it back to the football. What have you seen from Brian Hartline taking over that unit? And what did you see you know, from that uh, zone six unit that yeah. looks incredibly deep right yeah. now? Yeah, I mean, the, the depth I'll get to. But uh, I wish I had a, a, a better chance to, to get to see individual, the practice that I went to. But you just see Brian Hartline's innate player coming out of mm -hmm. him. You know, when you see him out there on the practice field and, and teaching the guys and, and whether somebody's doing something good or, or needs to be taught something, you know, it's almost like he wants to go out there and run the route with <laughs> yeah. him because you know, it's just so much ingrained into everything that he knows and, and what he eats, sleeps, and breathes. So it's great to see that out there for the guys that are there learning and, and that really want to you know, take it to the next level. Um, but you know, in terms of the depth, you, you know, you, you you see Jay or guys like C.J. Saunders that are just out there catching great balls, yeah, tracking he is the ball an exciting really well. Player, and I to think. think that you know K.J. is also going to do great <laughs> things, and to think that Paris is going to do things as well. So like that, just as an illustration of you know some of the talent that's in that room, and and that I think will be you know portrayed you know very heavily with yeah. with, uh, uh, with 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 a good quarterback and. In the hey guys, David DeHilster on uh, YouTube wants to know, what do you think Coach will do during the suspension? <laughs> what do I think Coach will do yeah. during the suspension? He I think he has a mobile uh, film <laughs> unit set yeah. up in his house already. <laughs> um, I do want. I think with the Oregon State game, with him not being able to be involved, um, I think he's kind of going to do the same thing that he's been doing now. Kind of stay back, know that, hey, he gets filled in every so often about what's going on probably every night. You know, he's got a phone call with Coach Ryan Day, um, talking to Coach Mick, who's his right-hand man, and kind of seeing what's going on. I'm sure, um, you know, when he's back loud at practice for Rutgers week and TCU week, he will be as intense as he ever is. Yeah. You know, he's an intense coach. Um, he expects perfection. He will be out there expecting perfection. I guarantee you he will be up with the team up until game day Friday night at midnight, right? Yeah. He will be there. Um and, and it's one of those things where when the game comes, who knows, he'll probably either watch it to Woody Hayes or go home with his family and be able to watch it somewhere where he's by himself and you know can't analyze everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. But um, 
I can guarantee you that when he's at practice and then finally when he's back on the sidelines, he will be an intense head coach that oh, yeah. is ready to have that team rolling. I bet he, if I had to bet, I would think he'd be at the Woody, wouldn't you? I would probably think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bunker down in that. Yeah, <laughs> right. In that windowless <laughs> office. Yeah. yeah, I may join him. I'm a big coach. Okay. Going, I'll bring I'll bring over. a case of Bud Light. Let's right, hang let's out, man. You got four or five pens writing notes for when he gets back, and then he needs to talk and and, and get with guys about. So that's the real benefit of having a, a former Ohio State captain contributing to Letterman Row. We're just going to embed Zach Bourne with there Urban you Meyer. Go, for the man. Opener. I'll hang out, get some right. footage. Exactly. You know, just broadcast. It we'll live. go nuts. I'm sure there'll be a couple broken TVs <laughs> at some point. You know, yeah, yeah, no, that'd be good uh, TV. If you're not going to no, be in the stadium. What better place would there be for you? That's what I'm saying. I don't go in the stadium, so maybe I'll go there. Oh, okay. I'll report live. You don't? I don't. I don't go to any games. Why um, not? I really don't. Uh, it's one of those things I think Evan will tell you he played with me. Um, I am one of those guys that I'm intense as intense can be come yeah. game day. Um, and so when I'm in the stands, I can't be intense. It's kind of <laughs> one of those things where – I'll probably never be able to go to a game until wow. I have kids that are playing and I can get used to it. Yeah. But up until then, I stay as far away from the stadium as possible on game day and watch it from a distance because if I'm there in person, I, w- I would lose it. That's, That's crazy. Same, is that for you, Evan? Yeah, too? so the intensity is, is definitely there for me. I remember uh, – shoot, I can't even remember who we were playing. It might have been Illinois last year or something. But it was when um, Austin had a catch over on the sideline and, and unfortunately got hurt right. and was – was going over on our side of the sideline. I was in the stands running down from my seat to try to like tell him like, hey, you're going to be all right. And I'm sitting there thinking, these people looking at me are probably like, what is this guy doing? Like, who is this dude? So that intensity definitely, it doesn't leave you. All right. That was a great question. Was that David? That was David on uh, YouTube. Uh, we've got Fred on Facebook. As uh, do you think having Coach Meyer at practice from September 3rd on, how do you think that will impact our second and third games? Well, impactful as in um obviously with him having having him there I think the guys are going to be excited you know as Evan said earlier you know having coach Meyer run the special teams in the beginning of practice Mm -hmm. have him kind of sitting back and you know analyzing everything that's going on from an offense and defense perspective um I think it's just going to get the guys more energetic you know I it's one of those things where Hey, the the guy that that you love to play for and love being your coach is there and you know in support of you, and so it's almost going to put a pep in their step. I don't think it's going to have any outcome from one way or the other. I think it'll pick practice up. I think yeah, those guys are going to say, "Hey, finally we're about to get coach back." You know, can't wait for week four. And mm-hmm. those guys are going to take this as a challenge, a three week challenge. I guarantee you, the coaches in the Woody Hayes are are they're so good at creating tunnel vision with all the players and those guys are saying we're, we are we're taking each week at a time you know and we're gonna you know th- this is Oregon State week the next week is Rutgers week then TCU week but those guys are really thinking themselves hey we want to go three you know going in week four when coach Meyer is gonna be in there on the sidelines to join us yeah and and, and two when coach Meyer like to, to his point about special teams when coach Meyer comes in he what makes him so great is the the edge that immediately follows him when he mm-hmm. comes into the room and and, and when he brings his presence in and, and his intense focus yep. into special teams, into offense, into defense or whatever, it, it promotes that additional, oh, dang, okay, like I, I see where it is and or, okay, now I need to operate this play under a bit of that type of pressure. So there's, you know, there's some games within the games that start to get practiced and start to get worked that better prepare us for football games when it yeah. comes when it comes time to, you know, put it, the foot on the ball. Yeah, it's a it's a culture change, right? When Coach Meyer comes in there, we've seen Kerry Combs is, you know, videos of him coaching. He brings energy. Right. That's what Coach Meyer brings. He brings energy. He brings perfection. He brings just that culture that has made Ohio State football what it is over the past couple of years since he's been here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got one more, Will, or are we gonna oh, turn these well, all right? Well, yeah, we've put these guys to work. <laughs> it's been a busy month, so it's great. It's been great having Zach Bourne and Evan Spencer, their perspective all along. They're not going anywhere. We're going to keep making them work all season long. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, we're going to have some football very soon. Well, we were get, we are going to have some football yeah, very we are. soon. Next week, sure. there's an opener: Ohio State, Oregon State. Urban Meyer will not be there, and now I know that Zach Bourne is not going to be in the stadium either. I won't. Maybe not Evan. I don't know. They might both be with <laughs> Urban Meyer. No, I'll be around the stadium. <laughs> All right, I'll we're be around the stadium. Maybe we'll get some inside access with Zach Bourne. I can't. I'm going to push really hard to see if uh, <laughs> if he can go join Urban Meyer somewhere. That would be fun. But uh, <laughs> I'll be in the stadium. Uh, we'll be covering that, of course. Ohio State football can't wait to kick this season off. 
uh, and have our coverage here, our game coverage at Letterman Row. And then once that's over, these guys are going to be right back in. We'll get some Buckeye cues going. We'll talk about what happened in the opener. We'll break down Dwayne Haskins. Evan can look at zone six, whatever. We're getting ready to actually get into football talk, and it's about time, guys, because it's been a long month. We're all tired uh, of dealing with this stuff and talking about things away from the field, so let's get our attention to that. So thanks to Zach Bourne and Evan Spencer for joining me this morning here. Uh, the sun is shining in Columbus, and Letterman Row is going to have more coverage about Urban Meyer and the Buckeyes moving forward. Thanks for joining us.